Moving on to our main reports today, Chinese e-commerce platform JDID recently announced a closure of its operation in Indonesia, adding a long list of online marketplaces which have shut down their operations in the last two years. However, the closure of these e-commerce players does not really reflect the real picture of a country's e-commerce industry. E-commerce platform JDID has officially closed its operation in Indonesia amid the tight competition in the online shopping business in the country. The Chinese online shopping platform announced recently that it had stopped operation on March 1st. JDID joined the long list of e-commerce platform which was shut down during the last two years for being unable to compete. Small platforms could not compete with large players, which not only have a superior technology, but also strong financial resources to lure customers. They have a lot of money to offer discounts and other forms of incentives, while the small players are struggling to cover their high operating costs. As the consequence, tens of e-commerce platforms have stopped operations in the last two years due to tight competition. They, among others, included Blanja.com, Elevania, Klapa, Rakuten, and Chipika. They did not have such financial advantages with larger players. At present, Shopee Indonesia, Tokopedia, Lazada, Blibli, and Bukalapak continue to dominate the market. Data provided by similar web show Shopee was the most visited e-commerce website in December with 191.60 million visits, followed by Tokopedia in the second place with 136.70 million visits and Lazada in the fourth rank with 83.20 million visits. Meanwhile, homegrown marketplaces, Blibli and Bukalapak were respectively in the fourth and fifth rank with 37.40 million visits and 19.70 million visits. The closure of tens of online marketplaces during the past two years does not reflect the real picture of the e-commerce sector. Even during the peak of COVID-19 pandemic, both the value and the volume of the transactions continue to increase albeit a lower growth rate. Bank Indonesia reported that the value of e-commerce transactions in the country reached a total of 476.3 trillion rupiah or about 30.85 billion US dollar in 2022. The value of e-commerce transaction in 2022 rose 18.8% from 401 trillion rupiah in the previous year. However, the figure is still below the central bank's target of 489 trillion rupiah, partly due to the easing of COVID-19 related mobility restrictions, which led many people to return to traditional and supermarkets just like before the pandemic. The central bank targets e-commerce transaction will grow by at least 12% in 2023 while the volume of the e-commerce transaction is projected to increase by 70% during the year. Data provided by Statista, an online platform specializing in market and consumer data, even gives more promising outlook. It estimates that the value of e-commerce transactions in Indonesia will increase to 95 billion US dollar by 2025, and that is an increase from about 59 billion US dollar in 2022. At present, Indonesia is the largest e-commerce in Southeast Asia, which contributes more than 40% of the total transaction value in the region. The e-commerce has been on the rise in the country for a while now and is not expected to stop anytime soon. But it will not be easy for the existing players to maintain their market. The key is that they have to find a niche market and stop burning money if they want to survive and earn profits.
Tens of e-commerce platforms and startups engaged in different types of business sectors have stopped their operations lately despite the promising outlook in the country's e-commerce market. It is an honor for us to have Papa Bima Yudhistira, the Executive Director of the Center of Economics and Law Studies, Celios, via a live Zoom today. He will share with us his points of view on the latest trend in the country's e-commerce and start startups. Good afternoon, Pak Bima. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Yes, our pleasure. So can you explain the real situation of the digital economy industry if we look at how many uh, startups and e-commerce have shut down their operations in Indonesia? Yeah, I, I do believe that uh, this year and perhaps next two or three years will be a uh, winter in uh, some of the startup. But it doesn't mean that many of the startup is uh, bleeding, lack of funding, and also closing their operations at the full scales. Because we see there is a changing of the landscape, especially after the pandemic. Whereas in the pandemic, many shoppers try to buy things from the e-commerce platform because they're offering discounts, promotions, even uh, free of the logistic costs. But right now, when the mobility becoming normal again, back to pre-pandemic level, many of the shoppers begin to buy in the traditional market. So this changing of the landscape also fueled by the business strategy of the, each of the startups. So perhaps the difficulties we see here is in the startup of the business to consumer side, like what happened in the GD.ID and many of the giant e-commerce platform in Indonesia. They struggle to make profit. They keep burning or keeping the discount because the loyalty of the consumers is built by giving a lot of a discount from this kind of the platform. However, many of the startup now changing their directions, not only serving the business to consumers market, but many e-commerce also playing as a business to business. So I do believe that a business to business is have a clearer futures, more prospect of growth, because they serve small medium enterprise, for instance, they are serving big corporations to having a good logistic costs competitiveness of uh, price or innovations in terms of the uh, services they provide. So it depends uh, in which sectors, in which segmentations of the e-commerce will be hard turn uh, this year. So, uh, Pabima, you mentioned about the changing landscape and then uh, some of the players have changed their direction to be more focusing on B2B as well. What are other causes that may lead to the closures of some marketplaces in Indonesia? Do you think it has something to do with the era of the, uh, what is it, uh, rate that is higher right, right now? Yeah, there's uh, macroeconomic conditions also triggering the closures of the some giant startup. Uh, the first one is about the higher interest rate because many of the startup have believed that they can provide enough uh, rate for the investors and also for the business partners when there is a changing of the macroeconomic many central bank raise the interest rate and the lending rate of the platform also increase so the cost of fund to getting a cheaper funding is also impacting the e-commerce. And also we see that from 2008 up to 2021, we see a lot of the bank giving cheap loans, as we see in the case of the SVB or Silicon Valley Bank in the US that just collapsed recently because they provide a lot of the cheap liquidity for the startup, for the venture capital. However, when the interest rate began to change, the Federal Reserve increased their interest rate. Many of the startup is getting difficult to get uh, the cheaper funding or the angel investors. And also the competitions from the local players and the social media players also changing the dynamics of the ecosystem in the e-commerce market. For instance, 
in Indonesia, 30 to 40 percent of the total sales is actually cumulative from the social media. So many of the small medium enterprise personal sellers, they can sell their product using the Instagrams, using the Facebook marketplace. It's a lot cheaper because they don't pay any taxes at the moment. And also they have a more interesting way to sell the product through the live sales using influencers. This also changing the competition with the giant e-commerce like a GD.ID. And for the some specific case of the GD.ID, at the first hand, they sell original branded uh, product. And right now, many of the consumers say that original branded product perceived as an expensive product. Therefore, they're switching right now to more like thrift stores or use a clothing brand that is more affordable for the middle uh, class consumers in Indonesia. So it's also changing behavior from the consumers. As you mentioned before, the macroeconomy situation has changed with higher interest rates. So it's no longer uh, sustainable for the e-commerce to keep on burning their money. So what do you think uh, that the strategy they should take that will be more sustainable in the future? I think the first, uh, they need to diversify their business. The founder need to talk with their managers, with the staff, how to avoiding the next catastrophe of the uncertainty in the global economic conditions, in the financial market conditions. Therefore, they need to diversify their business, or we call it pivot strategy. If the B2C or business to consumers e-commerce with the heavy burden of the operating costs is not working for them, they can switch to perhaps B2B, which is more heavily on the innovation rather than giving promotions. And also they need to diversify the way they're funding their business. Previously, uh, they have a strong correlate with the angel investors from China, from Europe, from the US. But right now, many of the angel investors, many of the international bank, perhaps struggle to keep funding this uh, local startup. Therefore, they need to perhaps go to the capital market, issuing new bond, or even targeted more local investors better than the foreign investors. So diversify is one thing. And then the third one, we see many of the e-commerce platforms uh, leave behind because the commitment of the founders. So once the founders getting a lot of the money, getting a lot of uh, initial return of their investments, for instance, in the capital market after IPO, they tend to switch or move to another startups, even working with the government, working with the state-owned enterprise. So they left the initial startup management by itself. I think the commitment of the founders of the startup is very important in the turbulence time. So with the recent trend of the closure of some e-commerce players in Indonesia, do you think that this will discourage investors from investing in Indonesian startups or they simply choose other sector? Yeah, they, they will have more selective. They will be selected the startup with the strictest or strongest due diligence ever. Because in these years, many of the startups, many of the venture capital that uh, our organization previously talked, they say that they want growth and also they want profit. So growth and profit is a must to be selected as a new startup funding. So they will be selected in the sectorals, for instance. Previously, e-commerce, perhaps the, the best sectors, the most growing sectors, but right now they will choose another sectors, perhaps digital bank, perhaps uh, some uh, financial technology that helping small medium enterprise or consumers lendings, and also many of the sectors that they perceive having higher growth and also positive revenue. And also they will be uh, selecting a startup to be funded based on the, the strong management team, but with the lean staff possible, 
So smaller the number of employee, but higher the returns of the startup, it's a probability to get more funding this year. Yes, that's right. That's why we have seen uh, some layoffs, a wave of layoffs in the startups and tech companies in Indonesia. Do you think we have hit the bottom and then we, we can start rebound from here? Or it's just another tech winter next year or years to come? We think that this is a long process of how the startups making more efficient, getting the right revenue stream, getting right liquidity streams. And I think it's a long process, but every single startup have their own obstacles or having their own challenges. So perhaps the e-commerce startup, because uh, they tend to have a high operating cost and also the demand from the investor to get more revenue stream. Therefore, the consolidation process perhaps taking longer than the other sectors. But we see that uh, many bright sides also in the financial technology, either the payment systems or in the lending system. So when the payment system is growing because of the QR code, many bank, uh, conventional, traditional bank, want to acquire more shares of the fintech payment. So I think this is a new consolidation moment, or even the peer-to-peer -peer lending, each of the company, they want to merge together. I think that's a positive sign that we see that uh, some consolidate faster, but the other perhaps take a longer time to consolidate. But we see that Indonesian population is very huge. This is a huge market in Indonesia, 270 million populations. They need basic needs. The digitalization is very fast. And also, if we see from the small medium enterprise as the new market, 64 million small medium enterprise, and many of the startups see this as a potentials. So why, why don't they start to grow faster? But on the other hand, be in mind that revenue stream is also a must in the perspective of the investors. So this is a market consolidation, one of the phase in our tech and startups industry. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and your insights on this. Pak Bima Yudhistira, the Executive Director of the Center of Economics and Law Studies, or CELIOS. Thank you once again for joining us on Economic Outlook. Yeah, thank you.